We'll insert a photograph. So go to File, Place, select uh, your image and click Place. Now, as in InDesign, bitmap images are linked. So make sure you keep all your linked graphics, such as logos or images that you're going to use in your Illustrator document in one folder, and then save the Illustrator document to that folder because it will link to it. Now, once it's in, we've got our image on the page here. We can go to one of the corners and press shift and drag out and drag in and that will constrain its proportions as we do that. Right, here we're going to look at the image trace feature in Illustrator. Now, having a vector based image which is made up of paths is scalable. So many designers need to have a graphic element that is scalable, especially if you're going to make it in a logo because it can be used as various sizes. Biggest problem with bitmap images like JPEGs um, and TIFFs that made up of continuous tone or pixel based images is when you scale them up, they will lose quality. Whereas a, a vector based image just can scale up um, and still retain its quality. Now, there is a trace function in Illustrator. Um, so we're gonna look at how that works. You can click either on the trace image on the button up at the top once you've selected a, a, an image frame, or we can go to window and we can go down to trace image. Now the trace image panel appears. Um, there's a number of different functions we can look at. It has a black and white one and it has a color function. Now we'll do it in color and if we click trace, it will come on, take a little time doing it. It's pretty hungry on your processor, so it might take some time. Now, what you will see now is it sort of turned into almost a very sort of graphic-y type image. And what that has done is made lots of paths within it and turned it into a vector-based image. It's very, very complex. And if we go to the view and we turn that to um, tracing results with outlines, it will show you all the paths it has created on there. It's a bit like crazy paving there, but they're very complicated paths, but it's created all those. Now I'll just turn that back off and you can go up to the top and the first one is auto color and the second one, the camera is high color. And this creates something that looks near enough to an original um, pixel based image. So if I click on that, it'll take a little bit of time to crunch through that. And now you'll see some uplift in your image. You know, maybe not totally perfect what an image is. Um, I'm looking at this at 300%. So if I take it down to 100%, it'll probably look near the original image. I'll just take it back up. And then now if I show tracing results with outlines, you'll see it's added more paths and more complexity to it. So the more you want it to look photorealistic, your ve vector image, you have to take um, the case that, that the image may become more complicated. Now, once you're happy with that, um, what you need to do is to go up to the button at the top that says expand. And what that does, it turns it into all those paths. Now, very complicated, you could draw that, I guess, but you can, you know, amend those things. But if we move away from that, now if that was saved, file, save as, we can save it as something like an Illustrator file or a PDF um, or an EPS. It would keep all that and then it could be imported and scaled in other programs. Also, it might be the case that you need to just draw a path around a object that may have already been cut out. Say, for example, in Photoshop, um, we have looked at how you would make um, paths or work paths and alpha channels in Photoshop, but you can do it straight away here in Illustrator using Image Trace. Now, here we've cut out an image 
Uh, maybe it's used a selection in Photoshop by the lasso tool or maybe the magic wand tool and then we filled it in black. It's been saved as a, an image file, um, a TIFF or a JPEG and then we brought it into Illustrator. Now best bet is always have it at a reasonable quality um, in DPI. If it's quite low then it'll have a ragged edge and when it auto traces around the edge you might find the lines are not that clear. So what we will do is, is just draw around here in a trace. I've got this um, element on here, image, a silhouette. I've got my way into the window menu and I've brought up image trace and I only needed to have it in black and white. So I will just leave it black and white and I will click trace. Now I'll draw that around and if we now go up to view and we just say outlines, you'll see it's drawn an outline around the edge of our object. I can zoom in on here and see how smooth that outline is. So when I drew it um, and made the selection, um, made sure I cut it out really well and also um, it is quite reasonably high quality in DPI, low res images you'll find it will be quite ragged. So that's fine, it's got a nice vector shape around that. I'll just turn back on the tracing results. And finally, I just need to click on expand and that will make a vector graphic out of that. Then I can save it as a Illustrator file, a PDF or an EPS, and that can be imported uh, in other programs and used as a logo or vector graphic element that is scalable.